This is a true crime in real time update from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. The May 5th trial date has now been set for the trial of Sean Diddy Combs, a name once synonymous with the glitz and glamour of the hip hop world, now finds himself staring down something far darker than any chart topping hit or flashy red carpet appearance. This time, it's not the accolades of his storied career that are being weighed, but rather some of the most serious allegations imaginable, sex trafficking, racketeering, and the exploitation of vulnerable women. The charges filed in Manhattan Federal Court stretch back over a decade, casting a long shadow over the mogul's legacy. Diddy appeared before Judge Oren Subramanian in that courtroom, greeted not by adoring fans, but by his legal team, who embraced him as if to offer a moment of solace in what is quickly becoming a legal nightmare. The judge wasted no time in setting deadlines, aiming for a trial to begin next spring, April or May. His defense team is eager to move things along, hoping that a quicker trial might curb the growing storm of public opinion that's been turning against their clients since these damning accusations first surfaced. But the scope of these accusations isn't just about legal charges. It's about a man who allegedly abused his power for years, drawing on a network of associates to enforce his control. The indictment details a disturbing pattern of coercion, with claims that Diddy used fear, violence, and intimidation to silence his victims. From kidnapping and arson to physical beatings, the charges read like something out of a dark crime novel. But this is no fiction. This is Sean Combs' reality. Of course, the latest development that has everyone talking isn't just about the courtroom or the charges. It's about that video. Yes, that video. Footage leaked in May of 2024 showing Combs back in 2016 in a hotel hallway with his former girlfriend Cassie Ventura... It's footage that's hard to shake. Combs allegedly grabbing, punching, and kicking Cassie, a woman he once called his protege. The video is brutal, shocking, and difficult to watch, but rather than confronting the contents of that tape, Diddy's legal team is fixated on how it made its way to the public. They claim the Department of Homeland Security leaked it to CNN as part of a broader attempt to smear their client. But here's the thing. No matter how that video surfaced, the question remains... What does it say about the man captured on camera? It's a move typical of someone in Combs' position. Shift the narrative, blame the system, and cast yourself as the wronged party. His lawyers argue that the leak and other supposed government disclosures have fueled a wave of damaging publicity, jeopardizing his chance at a fair trial. Their claim? That the jury pool has been irreparably tainted by the public's exposure to this evidence... What they conveniently ignore is that it's not the leak that's damaging. It's what's in the video. Following the broadcast of that footage, Combs took to social media in what can only be described as a half-hearted apology. I was disgusted when I did it, he said. I'm disgusted now. It wasn't a denial. It wasn't even a clear acceptance of responsibility. Instead, it felt more like an obligatory admission made not out of genuine remorse, but out of the necessity to acknowledge what the public had already seen. As if his disgust, rather than Cassie's pain, was the real tragedy here. (laughs) Meanwhile, the prosecutors were quick to counter the defense's claims, stating in no uncertain terms that the government wasn't in possession of the video when CNN aired it. So, what now? Diddy's legal team continues to cry foul, attempting to divert attention from the real issue at hand, what was caught on tape. Since his arrest on September 16th, Combs has remained in federal custody, unable to secure bail despite multiple attempts. Twice now, judges have ruled that releasing him would pose a danger to the community. At a bail hearing a few weeks ago, his lawyers offered up a $50 million bail package complete with home detention and electronic monitoring. A small price to pay, they argued, for a man of his stature. But the judge wasn't buying it, and with good reason. The ruling wasn't based on Diddy's wealth or fame. It was based on the fear that if released, he would use that wealth and fame to obstruct justice, potentially tampering with witnesses and derailing the investigation. For years, he has allegedly used his power to silence others. Now it seems... The courts are ensuring that he won't have that opportunity again. Yet, 
Diddy's legal team isn't giving up. On Tuesday, they filed an appeal with the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, hoping to reverse the decision and get their client out on bail. They claim the judge who denied the initial bail offer was swayed by exaggerated rhetoric, dismissing the $50 million package as inadequate without truly considering it. They argue that the conditions proposed, including electronic monitoring, would ensure Combs wouldn't be a threat to anyone. But let's not kid ourselves here. This isn't about whether Diddy would sit quietly at home while awaiting trial. This is about the kind of power and influence he has wielded for decades, the kind of power that could be used to make sure some of the most damning witnesses never see the inside of a courtroom. For now, though, he remains behind bars. And as the trial date draws nearer, one can't help but wonder if the swift justice that has eluded Diddy for so long is finally catching up with him. He built an empire not just on music but on control, on the ability to bend others to his will, and now, as the legal case against him continues to grow, it seems the world is starting to see through the carefully crafted persona he spent years perfecting. So, we wait. We wait for May 5th, when Sean Diddy Combs, once a symbol of power and success in the music world, will face a jury of his peers, not as a hip-hop mogul, but as a man accused of crimes that, if proven true, will reveal a far more sinister legacy than anyone could have imagined. And as that day approaches, one thing is clear. No matter how much money, fame, or influence you have, eventually, you have to answer for your actions. In a world where the darkest secrets lie just beneath the surface. So they said it was an accident, but the evidence says otherwise. Where hidden killers roam unnoticed in the shadows. Well, I think you would definitely be looking at a, a blend of toxic very bad narcissistic personality traits and they will be vengeful and possibly resort to violence join tony bruski as he uncovers the truth behind the most chilling cases they said it was an accident but the evidence clearly says otherwise each episode we dig deep into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable to your point of narcissism he thinks in his own mind how witty he is yeah but he lost that jury i i was i was done with him in two minutes from unsolved mysteries to infamous crimes geez you've just talked about how you've taught yourself how to do everything under the sun i bet you did a youtube video how to best kill somebody with a knife hidden killers with tony bruski takes you where few dare to go how does someone with such a dark secret go unnoticed for so long with multiple new episodes every single day we're not just telling stories we're seeking justice listen now on apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts just search for hidden killers with tony brewski